Uh, every month we uh, highlight one of our premier members, um, just like we highlighted JP Morgan Chase there on the enterprise side, we're highlighting on the vendor side, uh, one of the newer ones, Flexera for us, uh, who uh, recently Brian Adler joined the board uh, and is going to be sharing a little bit about uh, their view on the world, specifically in how FinOps interacts with the ITAM industry and some of the related areas. Uh, Brian, are you able to unmute there? I am here and I, my happy little green light went on, so I'm assuming you all can hear me. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Welcome, Brian. Over to you. Thank you, Jared. Thank you very much. And hey, everybody, as Jared mentioned, I'm our, over at Flexera, our Director of Cloud Market Strategy. And uh, if you don't mind, Jared, flip to the next one. I was going to talk a bit on the title slide here. Um, Flexera is that sort of a unique position here when it comes to FinOps and ITAM. We'll delve, delve a little bit more into the collaboration here. We are one of the few, the proud, the FinOps certified platform. We're very proud of that, that we have. Um, but also Flexera itself was born and bred in the uh, in the ITAM space. It's been doing that for decades at this point. So this is sort of, this this is our sweet spot, if you will. And we're very excited to be able to share our visions and our perspectives and our best practices and the road bumps and speed, you know, speed bumps and roadblocks that we've hit along, along the way as well. So next one, if you don't mind, Jim. Yeah. Uh, and then skip ahead, yeah, just a quick introduction to ITAM. So I talked to a lot of FinOps practitioners that uh, don't know what ITAM is, and that's totally fine and totally to be expected, right? It's not something that we've historically had to deal with. But as our FinOps practices continue to mature and evolve, you're going to see the need for this to, uh, these two to overlap. So ITAM uh, is short for IT Asset Management, and as the name implies, it's about managing your IT assets. And those IT assets typically fall in two categories, right? There's the software ones and the hardware ones. So there's Software Asset Management or SAM, and hardware asset management or HAM. We're gonna to focus today mostly on the software license management bubble, the little bubble there, or also called software license optimization. Basically the software licenses and the costs associated with them as you run them, move them, if you will, from your on-premises and, and start to run them and uh, move them into the cloud. I also included ITAD, IT Asset Disposition, because more folks that I've been talking to have actually heard of that as opposed to the, the SAM and the HAM side of the house. Uh, folks that have like sustainability initiatives, those kinds of things, IT Asset Disposition is about, you know, uh, from a green perspective, getting rid of your, uh, your assets, your old hardware assets in a more, uh, you know, eco-friendly manner, if you will. And then on the right, I highlighted the ITSM, right, IT Service Management. You might not know those four letters, but you probably are using something like this. If you have a Churwell or a ServiceNow portal that you're sitting in front of, that's your IT Service Management. How do these two interact? Well, you're sitting at ServiceNow portal, you say, I need a new laptop. Well, that's a hardware request that's going to feed into your hardware asset management system, if you will. And some of the more advanced clients that we spoke to have a ServiceNow portal or similar where they say, hey, I want a new VM running in Azure with SQL Server Developer Edition on it, for example. And that SQL Server Development uh, Edition license is something that needs to be tracked on the software asset side of the house. So uh, that's sort of how those two have historically interacted, even if you're not necessarily aware of that, that, that that's been going on. Uh, next slide, JR, if you don't mind. Um, and so why does this really matter, right? Why does this ITAM thing matter to FinOps practitioners? Well, a lot of words on this slide. I'm just going to pick and choose a few examples. Time, but for example, if you're in AWS, right, what are some potential license considerations that you need to think about? Well, dedicated hosts, they were created way back in the day. They have more reasons now, but way back in the day, they were created to help folks with licenses that were bringing licenses that were, that, and some are still tied to specific IP addresses or even worse, a dedicated MAC addresses, right? Try to get a dedicated MAC address in the dynamic world of the cloud. It's virtually impossible unless you get a dedicated host type of setup. Uh, if you're in Azure, you might have heard of Azure Hybrid Use Benefit, AHOB, they call it, or sometimes just Hybrid Use Benefit, and it allows you with certain restrictions, obviously, to bring some of your uh, on-premise licenses into the Azure public cloud and an ability to save considerable dollars doing that. If you're in GCP, they have the sole tenant nodes. It's sort of their equivalent of the uh, dedicated host. You might have rolled uh, licensed software into your custom images, and you're launching it in different regions or different instance sizes, and you may or may not have the, the rights to do that, and that might uh, expose you from a cost perspective on the licensing side. And if you do things in containers, containers is a whole new world from a licensing perspective. You have to worry about the CPU allocations, the requests, the limits, all, how many you're using, when you're using, how long you're using them. It can get very complex and very costly if you don't do it in a, uh, in a controlled manner, if you will. Uh, next one, Jared. Uh, so here's a real world example. I want to talk about some dollars and cents. Now, what you see here is something that we've encountered in the wild. This isn't sort of like a worst case scenario that we put together, right? When we've talked to customers over the years, this particular setup, Oracle database running on the far left here in the server configuration, running at about $237,000 a year. If you take that same basic configuration and move it into EC2 and you use EC2 active failover, and folks, the green boxes are sort of the things that flip the lever from a financial perspective, the price doubles to 475. 
If you take that same setup and you say, hey, I want to run it in VMware, and those VMs are not connected to the same shared backend storage, again, the price doubles to 475. If you put it in containers and you're doing you know, uh, weekly rebuilds, which is a reasonable thing to do, the price quadruples to almost a million dollars. This is the same functionally equivalent setup, right? But the price can be dramatically different. So from a FinOps perspective, if you're in a bubble, you might say, hey, I can move this workload from this instance to this instance because I have an RI here. I'm going to save a dollar an hour. And you might save a dollar an hour from an infrastructure perspective, but you could have serious repercussions from a license, licensing perspective. And that's why the ITAM folks and the FinOps folks you know, need to get together and share their, their knowledge, if you will. Uh, next one, please, JR. And then, yeah, skip ahead if you don't mind. So FinOps, I want to talk a little bit about the framework. I'm not going to spend any time on this because this is something near and dear to our hearts and we all understand it, right? The inform, optimize, and operate phases of FinOps lifecycle. I did include this one because I wanted it to be a lead in to the next one there, which shows that you can do ITAM in kind of the same way. It follows a very similar pattern, right? From an ITAM perspective on the inform side, hey, I want to be able to obtain visibility into my license usage and my entitlements for the cloud. I want to get that visibility of what I have going on. Uh, you want to make sure that you're looking at anything that can be running licensable software, uh, VMs, containers, PaaS services, whatever the case may be. On the optimized side, you want to leverage what, leverage what you have, that BYOL, bring your own license, that A-Hub that I talked about or the equivalent for other providers. Make sure you're utilizing what you have as best you can before you go off and, and purchase anything new. And then on the operate side, you really want to be able to understand that ever-changing licensing landscape. Uh, I mentioned containers in particular. The software vendors really haven't figured out how they want to license their software and containers. And if you don't do it right, things can get very expensive and very complicated. And it changes almost daily, it seems, with some of these providers. So you need to have this, this continuous automation in place to constantly check, uh, uh, constantly check your environment, much like we do you know, uh, in the standard FinOps lifecycle as well. Um, next one, JR, if you don't mind, I'm just going to finish up with a few. Uh, and next one, next step. So let's say you're a FinOps practitioner and there's the ITAM folks across the hall and, and vice versa. What are those next steps? How can these folks kind of work together and, and, and communicate, if you will? Well, if you're a FinOps practitioner on the informed side, do I have visibility into what I'm consuming with respect to licensing? Probably not. I have historically haven't had to worry about that, right? Hopefully these previous examples have shown that we start to need to worry about that. Optimize, do I know what entitlements and contracts I have in place that I could leverage? Again, probably not, but the ITAM brethren will. So, you know, bring them to the table uh, to help you out. And then operate, <clears throat> what tooling, processes, automation, et cetera, do I have or can I enhance that I have that will help me with this license and position, and particularly in uh, ongoing and near-term visibility of that. The worst thing that can happen is you get out of compliance on day one for an Oracle license, for example, and 30 days later you find out you've been out of compliance for that whole month. Oracle comes audit you and hits you with a couple hundred thousand dollar fine. That fine is unbudgeted, right? You weren't planning on spending that money. So that's going to have ripple effects on, on your business because certain things you wanted to do aren't going to get done because you don't have that money. And then last one, JR, uh, ITAM side. You're on the ITAM side of the house. Inform, do I know what's running in cloud and containers? Probably not, but the FinOps folks do. So let me go ahead and bring them in, into the fold. Do I understand the licensing models available for my on-prem and how that translates to cloud? Maybe not, but you should, right? That's what the ITAM folks should be doing and should be focusing on. Um, how do we make best use of our uh, existing entitlements and ensure compliance? Optimize, right? That's, that's something that there should be their sweet spot. And then lastly, how do we do this at scale, right? And how do I do this again in near real time to avoid those ripple effects on the rest of our business? And then, Jared, just the last one, I just want to mention one thing as we, as we kind of lead out. Uh, I've submitted the proposal to the uh, FinOps Foundation for a working group, an ITAM working group. And when Samantha White is back next week, we're going to work on that. So if anybody wants to participate or get involved, please let me know or hit up Sam when she gets back as well. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, it's great. I, I have to admit, I, I don't always understand where the overlaps happen um, between the various disciplines. So it's cool to see it laid out like that. Um, you know, and I think, you know, folks, it's really important to note that like FinOps isn't meant to be a panacea, just like any other discipline is not. It, it, it only really works, I think, well when you're collaborating with other groups. Um, one of the things that we've been working on in the new book, uh, we've been working on the framework, various places, is how, how the intersection points between FinOps and other disciplines. ITAM, ITSM, you know, TBM, SBOM. I feel like there should be a BAM in there. What is BAM? Um, but all the different disciplines uh, come together, right? And so, um, really good point. You know, uh, there is an ITAM working group that's kicking off or, or hoping to kick off. I think they're at the proposal stage uh, Tuesday. Uh, so check out events.finops.org. Oh, thanks. Ashley just dropped it in there if you want to become a part of that. And yeah, thanks, Brian, for the contributions in this area. I think it's definitely something we need to help clarify for the FinOps community. JR here from the FinOps Foundation. Thank you for watching. Please go to FinOps.org if you want to get plugged into this amazing community. And of course, hit subscribe right here on YouTube to get all the future content. Hope to see you soon.